Hello and welcome to another episode of Studio Tech. This is the show that helps you create great internet video. We explore various bits of equipment. And today we're going to look at some equipment from Blackmagic Design, and that is their Video Hub range. Well, in fact, one of their Video Hubs in particular, which we have just installed as an upgrade here in our studio. Now, Video Hubs are a very useful part of Studio infrastructure or the glue that connects everything together. And I have to say that when we started building our studios, I hadn't really heard of a video hub, but now we've got to the stage where we couldn't do without it. So before we get into the product itself, what is a video hub? Well, a video hub is really a big switch, a big matrix switch. It allows you to connect any of its inputs to any or many of the outputs. So you can take one camera input and say connect it to five different monitors. You might ask why would you want to do that? Well, what we've done is create a sort of a very simple diagram of a basic uh, studio built around black magic equipment. And we'll just talk through that. So here's our example studio based around the video hub. The video hub is just above center. It On the left hand side it has 16 BNC connectors which are the 16 SDI inputs. So these video hubs do use SDI. So above this you can see that we have a camera with a Blackmagic Design HDMI to SDI converter. So if you're using HDMI sources and you want to use a video hub you will have to put them through a converter to convert them to SDI. So we have one, two, three, four cameras connected to uh, inputs. The red lines denote uh, inputs onto the uh, video hub. On the right side of the video hub, we have 16 outputs, and these are connected to our monitors and also to the four SDI uh, inputs on the television studio. And then we've taken two of the outputs from the television studio, that's program and multi-view, and we have fed those into the inputs, in inputs 15 and 16. So we have four cameras and we have uh, six monitors. In the bottom right is just a, an iPad showing the iPad control software for the uh, video hub. So. What you would do is the first thing you would do using your iPad software control is you'd put camera one to an SDI input on the TriCaster. You'd put camera two to the other input. So you'd route your four cameras to your four uh, inputs. The next thing you'd want to do perhaps is to use the SmartScope Duo, which allows you to do waveform monitoring to check each of the cameras. So using the Video Hub control software, you could at first select camera one and feed it into the waveform monitor, make any changes you needed, then camera two, camera three, camera four, and you're doing this all through the software control panel. You're not having to re-plug anything. So when you finish that, you might say, well, actually, I'd always like to have these 8-inch monitors which are in front of the producer, and you might have one showing camera one and one showing camera two. Then the two monitors on the right hand side, they're sitting in front of the producer. So you'd probably have program out on one and you would have the multi-view on the other. And then on the left hand side, we're showing two other monitors. Well, what would you use those for? Well, these can be used as confidence monitors for the talent to see what is going on. Typically, you'd put program out on them, but you might put the multi-view output so they can see which shot is being queued up in preview. And of course, as the talent uh, you know, changes their mind, they might want program, they might want multi-view, or they might want to see another input. If you had a computer connected with a Skype guest, you might want to switch that computer direct to that monitor. And if that monitor sits just below or just above the camera, then it is much better from an interaction point of view for the talent to be able to see the guest as they are talking to them. Now here in this studio I actually have five monitors set up 
showing different things. The monitor just above this camera is actually showing multi-view, for example. And in some shows I like multi-view there, in others I actually want to program. We have a very large monitor over on the right hand side which always shows program out, which we can use for uh, checking focus and things like that. So using the multi, so using a video hub in this situation gives us incredible control and flexibility within the studio. And I hope that this uh, diagram just uh, easily demonstrates the flexibility of being able to connect any of the inputs to any or many of the outputs. Let's now look at the iPad software to allow you to control the video hub. This is a quick configuration we've done for our video hub here in the studio. The sources are on the top five lines and you can go between different uh, screens on the sources and then the destinations are shown at the bottom and again you can just scroll through those. If you want to change something you have to select the destination. So if you wanted to see for example um, what is connected to Rack PC 1 uh, or Rack PC input 1 you can see that the gallery camera is connected to it. And we say, oh, we don't want the gallery camera connected to that. We want camera five. Just go and press camera five and that is connected. Uh, so you can do that for all of the uh, inputs. So here you can, uh, you can just go and change uh, anything that you want. So Cube 155, this is our link to the North Carolina studio. If we wanted to send them the output of the Mac Pro screen, we would just uh, click on that, or the output of the TriCaster, we would click on that, or the output of the gallery camera, we would click on that. It is that easy to change. And you can uh, easily uh, update the, sort of the icons if you press and hold your uh, finger. It uh, lists the connections that are available and you can, so let's just go and find one. Let's uh, say the Rack PC, and we wanted to, let's find a suitable uh, icon uh, for it. Uh, there we go, the PC, and then that is now added in to the icon place there. And you can play around and, and move things around. You can't, there's no drag and drop, unfortunately. So you do have to clear each uh, input and then uh, then in, uh, add an additional input. As well as using an iPad you can use a Mac or a PC or there are a couple of uh, dedicated units. There's the Video Hub Smart Control Unit and the Video Hub uh, Master Control Unit. One is just push buttons, the other has a rotary dial and a small display. The software on the MacBook Pro looks very similar to that on the iPad. It just allows you to have more with more real estate to have uh, more buttons available on the screen at any one time. There are some different uh, options for, for viewing it. There's a 20 inch uh, version, there's a personal one if you're just using a few uh, inputs, and there are some uh, sort of text based sort of drop down uh, menu versions as well if you prefer that. We tend to use the uh, full screen 24 inch. It just, uh, with that amount of real estate, you can really see what is going on on the system. So having looked at a video hub in a small studio and how you control it, let's just look at the particular video hub that we have just installed. And that is this unit here. It is the compact uh, video hub. This is a 40 input, 40 output uh, unit. Has ethernet or USB control and it has uh, replaced a 16 by 32. We had the studio uh, video hub before this. Now when we got that 16 inputs and 32 outputs, we actually thought that'll be fine for our requirements. But it is amazing how you can soon use up the inputs and outputs, especially the outputs, as you have more and more monitoring um, and more and more devices that you want to send signals to. It is, uh, very easy to fill things up. We actually had run out of, uh, of, of inputs and we were having to recable things which was just a pain. When you've experienced the flexibility and ease of using a video hub, uh, recabling it just becomes a, a right pain as well as taking a lot of time. 
It is so nice to be able to come into the studio and just say, right, we need these cameras connected to these bits of equipment, these outputs connected to these machines for streaming, etc. It makes life a lot easier. Now we've installed our compact video hub in the back of our rack. It goes in the middle of the rack and on the left hand side are all the inputs. We have used up about half of the 40 inputs. Um, so we've got lots of room for growth there. Uh, on the right hand side though, on the output side, we actually have used 39 of the 40 outputs. So we are just about uh, maxed out on this video hub, but we have connected lots of bits of equipment that we don't uh, normally use. So I think that uh, we do have a little bit of flexibility there on outputs should we get some uh, additional uh, requirements. And with those 40 or 39 outputs, we actually have run spare leads as well. So it's not as if that's actually all connected to bits of equipment. For instance, here in the studio, there are four spare leads that can be plugged into bits of equipment. In the gallery, there are two spare leads as well. So we have built in some redundancy into those numbers. The Blackmagic uh, range of video hubs goes from $1,495, so what's that, just under £900, to just under $15,000. In fact, they have some bigger units even in a different range above the video hub family. Uh, the uh, entry point is 16 by 16 uh, micro video hub for, for that 1495 This uh, unit, the uh, compact uh, video hub, it was uh, $29.95 or you know, 1875 pounds. All these prices are plus tax. Uh, they do a lot. They are not uh, cheap, but I can tell you that uh, we have uh, got a, a tremendous benefit from, uh, from using them. So why don't you check out the range of video hubs on the blackmagicdesign.com website. We hope you found this useful and interesting. The programs that we do looking at studio infrastructure tend to be amongst the most popular. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's fantastic. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Studio Tech TV. It's good to know the number of regular viewers we get. If you want to watch this somewhere else, you can actually go to the, our main website, which is studiotech.tv, and uh, not only see the videos there, but see other information and links to different things, including ads.studiotech.tv, which is a free site allowing you to sell uh, used uh, video gear. For example, we actually sold our old video hub by advertising it on that website. If you want to watch us live, we do a live show every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. UK or 2000 CET. And it's easy to watch that. You just have to go to live.studiotech.tv and just click on the relevant tab. And there's also a chat room so you can join in the discussion around the program. We have quite a few people in the chat room each week who not only ask us questions, but quite frequently help us answer them as well. And you can follow me on Twitter at TTFN TV. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you'll watch another episode again soon. Goodbye.